The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Bursa Malaysia webinar. So my name is Smita and I'm the moderator for today. And this is Ian, Ian Tai, who will be speaking about Valuation Masterclass. Mm -hmm. So before we begin, if you can hear me clearly and you can also see the webcam, please raise your hands. Okay, if you can hear me clearly and you can see the webcam, please raise your hands. Okay, I see some of you all raising your hands. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. You can put your hands down now. Okay. So, before we start, we'll just go with the disclaimer first. Okay, the webinar tonight is purely for educational purposes and there's no way that the speaker or Bursa Malaysia will be held responsible for your buy sell of the stocks that are spoken about in the webinar tonight. The purpose of this webinar tonight is purely educational. So, yeah. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah, you're doing fine. <laughs> okay, and before we begin, I will just go ahead with um, the webinar series that we have. So our first, our first session, we have a um, beginner webinar series, which are designed for beginners. So if you're a beginner and you're new to investing in the stock market, you can join us on every first Tuesday of the month to join us for this beginner webinar, teaching you how to start investing in the stock market. Our next webinar will be on the 3rd of June, and it will be the, the science of buying and the art of selling. And our speaker will be will be David Poe. So we also have a series of Chinese webinars. So if you're interested in learning these webinars in Chinese, then you may uh, block the every second Tuesday of the month for these Chinese webinars, which are designed for retail investors. So our next session will be conducted by speaker Pauline Yong, and it's on the 11th of June. And for our intermediate and advanced webinar series, just like this one, it's designed for retail investors on every third Tuesdays of the month. <clears throat> so for our next one, it will be on the 18th of June, and it's technology-aided stock trading, and our speaker will be CC Yong. Mm -hmm. But of course, for today, we have Valuation Masterclass, and our handsome speaker here, Mr. Ian Tai. So Mr. Ian Tai is the content producer for KCLaw.com. KCLaw.com is the leading personal finance blog in Malaysia. He is also the communist of 5th person Value Invest Asia and Majalabo.com. First person and Value Invest Asia is a Singapore, are both Singapore-based stock investment websites, whereas Majalabo.com is the leading BM version personal finance blog in Malaysia. And Mr. Ian Tai also, is also a dividend investor. He collects eight to nine months in dividends from personal stock portfolio in every year, average around six plus percent per annum in dividend yields. So his current stock portfolio is in Bursa, Malaysia, as well as SGX. Okay. So Mr. Ian Tai, let's all welcome Mr. Ian Tai. Yay, hi. All right, first and foremost, um, thank you so much, Smita, for a uh, for a while. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm also getting a little bit excited over here. Thank you so much for the introduction. All right. Welcome. And it's a privilege of mine to be here today to actually present what I've been doing on almost on a daily basis. All right, to you guys. So today we're going to talk about um, we are going to talk about stock valuation. All right. So basically, this is a very important topic when it comes to um, um, stock investing. Mm -hmm. All right, because you can't do stock investing without knowing how to value a stock. All right. So without further ado, I have actually prepared a lot of contents for you guys. And uh, before I begin, uh, if you have a smartphone, all right, 
and uh, you have a calculator app because we are doing valuation mm -hmm. means to say it has a lot of numbers and figures but don't worry it's not like it's not very complicated to do but it's very helpful that if you have a if you have a calculator beside you or the calculator app all right beside you when you actually go through this particular series all right oh, okay. all right so without further ado let's begin all right what's my first part okay um, so part number one we are going to talk about how do we achieve consistent results in stock investing so let me cut let, let me press that clicker. Okay, so let's start with something a bit lighter before we get into something more technical. Um, all right, today I'm going to share with you a little bit about the, par the Pareto principle, or usually it's more commonly, commonly known as 80-20 rule. Mm, okay. okay, I'm not too sure whether you heard this before or not. All right, so I did a little bit of uh, research on this Pareto principle, and it is actually named after an Italian economist called... Mm. Um, Mr. Wilfredo Pareto, so therefore the Pareto principle. Okay, so basically there are a lot of usage when it comes to this particular uh, principle mm -hmm. and it's actually stated on the screen here. So initially it was actually used for economics, I mean to say like for example for him, for in his case, um, he states that 20% of a population actually owns 80% of a country's wealth. Oh, okay. Yeah, alright, so that is basically his findings. Uh. Mm -hmm. But sooner or later, more and more people tend to use it into other um, areas of life. Mm -hmm. Like for example, time management. Like for example, like some people may say, actually 20% of what you do actually impacts, gives you the, gives you 80% of the results. Oh, okay. Something like that, all right? Mm -hmm. And of course, when it comes to business, some people say the, twen the top 20% of your customers tend to give you the, the best 80%, the best, uh, not to say the best, I mean, it accounts for 80% of the, the the revenue or the profits, mm. something like that, all right? Not too sure whether you can relate it. Nah. Of course, when it comes to sports, um, mm. like for example, uh, if you play, let's say, badminton or tennis, um, world rank number one player and world rank number 20 player, huge difference, right? Yeah. All right, you can, they are both good players, but mm. somehow when you put these two together, it seems like, how come one is like a master and the other one is like, he just learned how to play badminton yesterday. Mm -hmm. So it's that kind of 80-20 rule. And it also applies in stock investing. All right. So with that, um, I have actually dived in because for me, I have been quite interactive with my subscribers, my uh, readers, and of course, webinar listeners mm -hmm. on, on the subject of stock investing. How do they invest and what causes them to actually invest and achieve the, their kind of results? That is something which is to my interest. Uh. Okay. Let me say, how do they actually get that kind of results? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, which is something, um, to me, um, it's also a, a form of study. Mm -hmm. okay? okay, I'm interested to know about this. So basically, I found that usually, when it comes to achieving consistent results, right, um, what happened is this, a lot of people may not actually achieve consistent results, when it, especially when it comes to stock investing. Mm -hmm. Some of them say sometimes I make money, sometimes I don't make money, right? Sometimes uh, I make so much profit, but then the next stop I lose it all. All right, it's yeah. actually quite common. So what are the common traits? So basically, I've actually pointed out this to you, um, pointed out on the screen. So not too sure whether you are agreeable or whether you find this familiar to you or not. All right, um, a lot of people tend to invest based on the following. For example, many people tend to follow. Uh, maybe they have lunch or coffee with their friends or relatives and then, they, and then the, the subject of stock investing comes up and then they start to talk about certain stocks and stuff like mm. that and that actually, um, how would I say, ignited the interest, hey, there's such such a stock, ah. okay, well, then, I, then I go and find out more about it. Mm -hmm. So it's actually very ad hoc. That means before the coffee session or before the lunch session, you may not know what, you may, it may not come occur to your mind that, hey, yeah, I should actually invest in ABC stock or something like that. Mm -hmm. But then because of the coffee, now you want to actually get into it already. So so most of the people tend to actually have this kind of I, this kind of uh, way. That's how they get into the stock. Yeah. And of course, some of them, they tend to read the newspaper. Mm -hmm. Maybe they read, let's say, the edge. Then, not to say the edge is no good. I also do read the edge or any, like for example, or any other publications. Uh, right? Maybe they have, wow, headline news. Wow like that, okay, this talk like that, okay, okay. Then, they, then they start to find out. 
It's only through reportings um, or brokers, uh, even brokers' reports. Mm-hmm. They found they find all these stocks and then they start to actually invest in them. Not too sure whether you buy, uh, not too sure whether you buy stocks because based on all this kind of uh, method. And another common trait that I find is that most people when they buy stocks, they do not know what they are getting into. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, what do I mean? For example, if you ask if you ask them, if you ask people, okay, let's see whether it applies to you or not. If for the last stock that you purchase, doesn't matter what lah, Maybank or Asia or whatsoever, can you actually tell me what is the, uh, how much did the company make, when, how much profits did they make for the past five to ten years? Mm-hmm. Most people would say, oh, uh, don't know leh. Uh, uh, how much lah? So people buy stocks. But yet they do not know how much profits they are, the company is actually making. Mm. All right. So most of them have that kind of thing. So I'm not too sure whether that's you or not. All right. So let's keep it as it is. The third reason is education. Okay. Okay. Uh, most... Just just one minute yeah. again. Uh, now we're getting some feedback that the slides cannot be seen. Slides cannot be seen. Yeah. Oh, like that lah. Um. So what do I do now? Okay. Just one minute. Yeah. Huh? We'll just see. Or I just keep. Talking and then don't worry lah. I'm just telling stories lah. Okay. Right? So let me just uh, continue on. Um, so usually what happens is that the third reason why people actually, how people get into stocks is because they're interested in the profits. But yet when you ask them, um, have you attended any seminars or workshops and books and stuff like that? So maybe they they read some books, maybe they bought some books, maybe they attended some um, webinars or seminars or maybe they read a blog but then it wasn't actually enough so it's actually a good thing that you guys are here because um by being here you are positioning yourself to be in the 20 percent group lah. so congrats to you when it comes to that okay now i'm gonna review to you what the 20 percent actually does okay all right so that you can avoid what the 80 percent um you know the mistakes that the 80 percent made can be actually easily avoided. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to share it with you what the 20% actually does. Okay, so basically, to sum it up, all right, what I would like to advocate to you is this. When it comes to stock investing, most people do it on an ad hoc basis. Means I think of a stock, then I buy, mm-hmm. right? But usually for the 20%, we always do it with a system, all right? So a system is very important when it comes to investing. Doesn't matter if what you invest, properties, um, stocks, or even if you're into business, it's very important for you to have a system. Okay. Now, when it comes to stock investing, just bear in mind that there are always uh, for stock investors, not traders. A uh, trader trading will have another another set of rules. I don't trade. I'm an investor. So when it comes to systems, it's very important for you to have these three systems in place in order to achieve consistent results. The first one here is um, the system where you assess the quality of a stock. Like for example, in Bursum, uh, in Bursum Malaysia itself, we have about 900 plus stocks listed on Bursum Malaysia. But not all, not all of them are good. All right, there are some are good, there are some are bad, right? Some are profitable, some are not profitable. So you need a system in place to actually separate what is the good, what are the good ones from the bad ones. Mm-hmm. That one you need to that one you need to read annual reports and quarterly reports to find them out. So you need to have a system to separate good from the bad. That's the first one. Then after that, we after you have done you have set up the first system, then we have system number two. Now you have a pool of good stocks, right? Mm-hmm. The bad ones you don't need already because not invest not exactly um suitable for investment. Yeah. So now you are left with the good ones. 900 good ones, but none of them are cheap, right? Mm-hmm. So value investing is about buying under value or cheap stocks. All right. Okay. okay. So what we need is a system, which is today's webinar. How do you, how do you actually separate the expensive one from the cheap one? Mm-hmm. So that we can actually narrow down to the cheaper one. So that is the, that is what we are going to look at today. And of course, the final one is that from that cheap stocks, all right, then we have portfolio management techniques. Mm-hmm. Meaning to say when you have a pool of money to invest, all right, how much do you actually buy? Mm-hmm. Do you, if you are given like 100,000 to invest, do you dump it everything? Or do you actually split it? How do you split it? 
all right and after you have invest okay here's the thing most people who actually buy it on an ad hoc basis they track their results on an ad hoc basis mm -hmm. but for investors especially the 20 percent one they tend to track their results they they want to see where they have come mm -hmm. their progress and stuff like that so that's very important and of course a system must be in place because when you buy a stock prices may go up uh. yeah prices may also come down right mm -hmm. prices may also go sideways right mm -hmm. nowhere right so in all these three scenarios we have a system in place uh, for investors to react all right because without the system you are investing uh, without certainty mm -hmm. so you're just investing blindly blindly lah. okay means uh, if you do not understand whatever i've mentioned mm -hmm. at the end of the day you just need to remember one thing investing is about systems all right if you don't have a system don't invest that's, okay that's as simple as it is right okay with that um i've actually covered the theory the next um i did not know 15 minutes or so we are going to do uh the technical and the practical part so now i would like you to participate with me maybe we can check out the polls and stuff like that so it's game time um which of the two stocks would you invest into okay so this is actually a game so I'll, hopefully you guys are participative now let's move on let's start with the first one yeah okay let's start okay now i'm going to give you two stocks stock a and stock b stock a is priced at uh, the share price is trading at one ringgit stock b is actually trading at 10 ringgit now which of the two stocks would you invest or which of the two stocks do you think is cheap all right so you may actually put your comments in the okay, chat we, box right yeah um, a lot of people are answering stock a stock a yeah? mm -hmm. okay so are there any any further um information any further feedbacks from the people uh depends some people are saying depends on the pe ratio too little information to decide uh depends on the fundamentals of the stocks um b some some actually said b is too expensive then some actually say there's not, not enough info to know which is the cheaper stock okay so we can say that out of 10 people six or seven people may say stock a right mm -hmm. and then there will be one or two uh who say stock b just to see whether it's just to see whether I will come up with something new, right? Mm -hmm. And there are some people who say not enough information. Yes. The right for me, the right answer is not enough information. So for those of you who have actually answered that, that is basically the correct answer. Mm -hmm. Not enough information. Not enough information. Correct. So a lot of people they tend to invest in the stock because they see the price. Mm -hmm. They do not know what they are getting into. They only see the price. It's like buying a property. Say, um, two properties. 300,000 and 500,000, which one is cheaper? Then a lot of people say 300,000, right? Mm -hmm. But they never ask what's the per square foot of the property. Is it a big property or a small property? So that is the, that is the purpose of um, doing valuation. All right, which okay. is actually basically this slide here. So for me, myself, I cannot decide. Mm -hmm. And this is why we do stock valuation. Okay? Okay. Now there are basically um i'm gonna talk about four valuation tools all right so it depends on which one is more uh more to your liking okay so basically there are four the first one is pe ratio or price to earnings ratio which is where you compare the stock price against its earnings per share mm -hmm. the second one is um peg ratio or pack ratio which is price to earnings to growth ratio that means to say after you have calculated the pe ratio we will calculate then we will compare it with its growth. The third one is price to book ratio or PB ratio. That one we want, we would like to compare the stock price against its book value. All right, so its book value is basically the shareholders equity divided by numbers of shares, okay? The fourth one is actually dividend yields, whereby we are gonna compare the stock price against its dividend payouts, all right? Now, I'm gonna go into each and every single one of them in greater detail. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you new information, okay? Now, tell me, which of the two stocks itself is cheaper? Is it stock A or is it stock B? Now, stock A, the price is actually $1, earnings is $0.05. Mm -hmm. Stock B, it's, um, the price is $10 and the earnings is $1. All right, so guys, which of the two stocks do you prefer to invest? Okay, people are already answering and they're all answering stock B. Stock B right so there's no no one saying stock a right no no one is saying stock a all right so that will make my job easier lah hey eh, one 
stop. Yeah, there's one, there's one person who answers, not A. <laughs> okay, now, um, all right, so for, for most of you, I believe you, are, you have actually understand the concept, but um, there's one that we need to actually explain, lah, all mm -hmm. right? So I'm going to uh, dish out my explanation. So basically, it is very, um, you can't look at price alone. The first reason, so basically what we do is that one of the things that I do is we actually calculate the PE ratio of a stock. So price to earnings. Mm -hmm. All right. Why do I calculate that? Because first of first and foremost, 900 stocks in Malaysia, some of these stocks don't even have earnings. Then you should invest in them. Lah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to invest in profitable companies, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So therefore you look at its earnings. Now, stock A, if you look at PE ratio, you take $1, you divide it by five cents, therefore your PE ratio is 20, mm -hmm. all right? That means you say for every dot, for you're willing to pay 20 ringgit to invest in a company that is making $1, mm -hmm. okay? For stock B, it, the PE ratio is 10, 10 divided by one, which means for every, for every dollar the company earns, you're willing to invest $10. Mm -hmm. okay. So basically stock B is cheaper in that sense, okay? Okay. Simple, huh? Yeah. Move on. Why stock B is cheaper? Okay, so basically this this uh, explains it all. Mm -hmm. So personally, for me, I will personally will um, aim for stocks which are of lower PE ratio. Okay, mm -hmm. so a high PE ratio. If a stock is actually uh, trading at a high PE ratio, that means it's more expensive and more uh, overvalued. That means the deal is less attractive. Whereas low PE ratio means it's cheaper and more undervalued. All right, this so one is very simple. Okay. Now let's play on. Let's add new information. Now I'm going to give you two stocks. Okay, it's the same stock, but for stock A, right? Um, I have actually calculated that the earnings growth rate for the past ten years uh, for stock A is twenty five percent per annum. Let me say, um, it could be a stock where it made one hundred million in one year. The next year it made. 125 million. Mm -hmm. So it jumps 25% on the per annum basis. Whereas for stock B, uh, for the past 10 years, its earnings are growing at a rate of 5% per annum. That means this year they make 100 million. Next year they make, um, next year they make, let's say, 105 million. So there's new growth, but not as much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so guys, which of the two stocks do you think is cheaper? Okay, people are answering stock A. People are start. Yeah. Stock A, stock A, stock, stock A. A. 1B. 1B. Stock A, stock A, stock, stock A. Stock A, stock Okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's my personal view when it comes to looking at these two stocks. Okay. Now, obviously, we are going to have this calculation. Let's take a look at both stocks, A and B. Now, when it comes to A, it has a PE ratio of 20. All right. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to B, the PE ratio is 10. So what happened is that um, it seems that in initially B seems to be cheaper than A, right? Mm -hmm. But when we actually factor in growth, okay, what we do is that we take the PE ratio, which is 20, all right? Okay. Now it's a good time to actually use the calculator, mm -hmm. all right? If you have a calculator beside you, if you have a PE ratio of 20, and then we go back, we divide it by the 10 years earning growth rate mm -hmm. of 25% per annum. So 20 divided by 25, you should get 0 0.8. Whereas for B, you take P ratio of 10 and you divide it by 5, mm -hmm. therefore you get P ratio of 2. Okay. So which of the two stocks is cheaper? Actually, it depends, right? It depends on which of the two ratios do you prefer to use? Mm -hmm. okay. That means to say there's no right or wrong answer for this one. Okay, depends on what you are looking at. Okay, but for the sake of explaining what is the PEG ratio, I'm going to just uh, state the formula here. So if the stock is growing, uh, always aim to find a stock where the PEG ratio is lower. Mm -hmm. All right, the, form the formula is as stated, PE ratio divided by earnings growth. Now. According to the formula, if PEG ratio is more than one, that means the stock is expensive, lah, mahal, mm -hmm. and it's overvalued. Whereas if, it, if the PEG ratio is below one, then it's cheaper and more undervalued. 
okay? But to compare the two, to put the two side by side, stock A, I would say stock A is cheaper mm -hmm. if, all right, in terms of uh, if we look at earnings growth, okay? Now, when it comes to stock B, it is cheaper if you base on today's earnings. Mm -hmm. That means I, I'm investing in something which is today. I want to see money today. If you are that kind of person, actually, usually I am. Mm -hmm. So I will, for me, right, I may actually go with stock B. There's no right and wrong answer. Mm -hmm. But another friend of mine is more into the growth prospects of a company. That means he, he wants to see, wow, wow you know, um, stocks like, let's say, um, Alibaba or Tencent, wow, good growth there. Wow, China, China, the market's so huge, right? Wow, you can keep on getting more and more internet subscribers. Mm -hmm. Then they may want to look at earnings growth. But if you are the stable type, let's say, oh, yeah, public bank, uh, uh, Oh, but actually, by the way, all these stocks that I mentioned, right, it's not for, it's not actually a, a recommendation, lah. All right, I'm just illustrating. Let's say public bank it grows on a steadily basis, then you may want to go into stock B. Mm -hmm. So stock A, let let me just go into the theory. Stock A is for you if you are interested to invest in a fast growing business. All right, whereby whatever company, uh, whatever the company made, that means every dollar the company receives in cash, it will actually dump in more into investments. Mm -hmm. I mean, so if it has three three restaurants, not a three, I mean, if let's say it has 300 restaurants, next year they say, I want to hit 400 restaurants, 500 restaurants, 600 restaurants. It seems like very exciting. Yeah. So rapid expansion. So in if you are in that kind of, a, if you are that kind of investor, it's best for you to read the chairman's statement. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, Find out what the what the company, uh, the managers, what they are trying to do with, with your money in the future. That one is very important. Whereas if you are the stock B kind of person, then you assess the company's business model, whether or not it's stable or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So you assess it because of two reasons. Mm -hmm. Number one, you want it to uh, continue to grow slowly. Number two, uh, of course, when you invest. Uh, there are times that we need to prepare for economic crisis, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, there's, there's a question here uh, uh, that someone asked, why read the chairman's statement to prospect? That one is very important. That is the one of the most important things that you need to read. Because when you invest, the company, let's say the company receives your cash or something like that, uh, it has to do something, right? So you want to, if you are the, you want the company, you want to know what the company is going to do with your money. Mm -hmm. Okay? If not, why why invest, right? Yeah. <laughs> like for example, now I have now I, um, a stock has ten manufacturing plants. So what are they gonna do with your money? Uh, do are they gonna stay um, after five years later having the same ten manufacturing plants, mm -hmm. or are they gonna or are they gonna you know set up uh, a plant in another place, set up and set up and set up because more factories, more income. Mm -hmm. Then okay, then you then you invest, right? So that is where growth comes in. That's where um, your capital appreciation comes in. Okay. You can't tell that with just financial statements. All right. But you assess the business model of the company mm -hmm. so that um, it's resilient against economic crisis. That's very important to me. Lah, to me. All right. <laughs> okay. Because it's not about making money. It's about safe. It's about investing safely. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's move on. I believe we have all kinds of questions, right? Yeah. Uh, if you have questions, just put it in. Um, we will actually address them. Lah. Yeah. We've got half an hour to address them, right? Yes, we have half an hour ah. to, towards the end to address them. Okay, I'll make it quick, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, third one. All right. So we have covered PE ratio, which is a comparison against earnings. We have the P, we have the PEC ratio, which is PE ratio against growth. Now let's move on to the third one. Two stocks side by side. One is at a dollar twenty cents. The equity is thirty cents. Um, stock B twelve ringgit. The equity is um, fifteen ringgit. So which of the two stocks do you think is cheaper? Okay. Okay. Now equity means like um, for example, me and Smita, we decided to open up a shop, a, a retail shop, and then we put in fifty thousand each into the shop. So. The shop is um, 
let's say 50,000 each, so that means our capital is 100,000. Mm -hmm. All right, one year later, let's say it make another 100,000. So that is equity, which is 200,000. Okay, so why is it different from the price? Let's say our friend here, Chun Xian, he's rich enough to buy, buy, buy up our retail shop. Mm -hmm. He's willing to put in 400, he's willing to buy, buy us out at 400,000. Isn't it good? Yeah. All right. So that means we put in one hundred thousand. We made one hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So actually, the equity is um, two hundred thousand, right? But Chun Xian is offering us four hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So is it twice the amount? Yeah. So that is PB ratio. Oh, okay. Right. So which of the two is cheaper? Okay. Some answers stock B. Some answers stock A. Uh, one person actually said the. Not enough info, but we're getting most answers are B. Okay, so basically, I didn't want to play mind, mind games over here. Lah. It's <laughs> actually a basic calculation. So the answer is actually stock B for now, all right? And this is to illustrate uh, how do you calculate PB ratio. Mm -hmm. So PB ratio is calculated at least you take the price, you divide it by the equity, like stock A, $1.20, you divide by $0.30, cents, and your PB ratio is 4. Whereas for stock B, although it's priced at 12 ringgit, but the equity is 15. So therefore, 12 divided by 15, you're supposed to get 0 0.8. Mm -hmm. So therefore, stock B is cheaper than stock A. In that sense. Lah. Okay. okay. So I think most of you get it, all right? So just be patient. <laughs> I know what I'm present, presented so far for some is actually very basic. <laughs> all right. But we'll get to the technical and really, really interesting one later. All right. Of course, high PB ratio means expensive, low PB ratio is cheap and undervalued. Sub, sub, sui, lah. <laughs> okay, now we move on to the last one, which is the dividends. Now we are comparing price against dividends. Now don't take it like so, so far, all right? Just based on these two information, which of the two is actually cheaper? Ah, maybe Smita, you can actually answer in 30 seconds time. Ah. All right, <laughs> so we have stock A. I'm just going to read out. Stock A, the price is five ringgit and eighty-five cents, and you found out that the dividend per share is about twenty-nine point three cents, all right, which is zero point two nine three. Whereas for stock B, uh, the stock price is two ringgit eighty-nine cents, and then the dividend is seven point two cents. So which of the two is actually cheaper? So what do we have? Okay, a lot of people are answering stock A. Mm -hmm. Stock A is cheaper. Stock A is cheaper. What do you, what do you say? Or mm. do you need a calculator? <laughs> <laughs> I would say stock A as well. Stock A lah, mm. right? Okay, most of most of us are getting stock A, right? Mm -hmm. One of them says depends dividend stable or not. Okay, that's that's a very good point. That one I will be bringing up later. All right, <laughs> <laughs> all right, because it's very important. So the answer for now is stock A. Mm -hmm. So if you can see, um, dividend use is like this, huh? We always calculate dividend use of a stock. Okay, actually dividend is dividend stocks, dividend paying stocks are actually very good because number one, um, it signifies that the company has cash. Oh, okay. All right, no cash cannot pay you dividend. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, invest for what, right? <laughs> <laughs> that that's the first one. Mm -hmm. Second reason why some some companies tend to pay, uh, every hundred dollars they make, all right, maybe they pay twenty twenty dollars in in uh, dividends, mm -hmm. but then they keep eighty percent for for investment. So why why find dividend stocks? Because number one, it signifies cash. Number two, when you have got cash, some of them can choose to invest. And that's where you get your capital gains. Because if the stock is if the stock is the type where the business model is like oh, yo, so hard to get cash. Mm -hmm. It's like every day you have to chase customer for money one. Then very hard to invest. Because every day, every now and then they need to keep on raising cash mm -hmm. to stay alive, then no point in solar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so dividend use is calculated as follows. You take 29.3 cents for mm -hmm. stock A, yeah? you divide it by 585 cents, and therefore you have a dividend yield of 5.01%. Stock B is like this, 7.2 cents, you divide it by 2.89 cents, and therefore your dividend yield is 2.49 cents. Alright, so Smita, so, so far, okay, right? Okay. Okay, lah, alright. <laughs> All good. All good, lah. <laughs> so, usually, 
Why is this under valuation? Very simple. Because for me, if I see that this, a stock is actually giving out a good dividend yield, mm -hmm. that means it's cheap and more undervalued. If the stock is not giving um, very high returns in terms of dividend yield, then it's more expensive and it's deemed to be over overvalued. Oh, me. okay. Okay, but what is the benchmark? What's the minimum? What's the maximum? Okay, so usually I have this rule called the 3% to the 5% rule. Why 3%? Because in Malaysia, Bank FD give how many percent FD? 3%, 3%. right? Then. So, so without any, without taking any risk, you're getting 3%, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to invest into something, then you're taking risk, right? Yeah. So since you're taking some risk, you're you are going for it, you might as well aim for higher things. Higher 3%, more than 3% returns mm -hmm. in cash returns. Okay, so okay. that's why the minimum is 3%. Uh, so if you ask me, hey, Ian, can buy at this stock, how much the dividend you? Uh, 0.5%, say, what, 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 okay? Yeah. <laughs> so that is the logic behind it. Okay, so with that, we covered the, the second part. Now let's get into something really, really exciting. How do you value a stock like a pro? Okay, so this is very important. Mm. Now, um, just now, just now, maybe some of you say, ah, yeah, Ian, this one basic stuff. Uh, uh, so, webinar regular. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to give you two real stocks. All right, stock A and stock B. Just now, all these are fictitious for, for beginners to learn. But now, this is the one. This, the two stocks are actually real. Okay, later I'll reveal their identity. Now, let's go back to 2015. All right, I purposely do that. Stock A at that time, at 2015, year 2015, which is like three, four years ago, uh, the price is 11 ringgit and 70 cents. Stock B, the price is 3 ringgit and 33 cents. For stock A, the earnings is 72 cents, the dividend is 71 cents. Okay? For stock B, the earnings is uh, 26.9 cents and the dividend is 21.5 cents. Now, as stated before, all these data are extracted from the actual annual reports of stock A and stock B for the financial year 2015. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of time because there are two calculations that you may want to calculate. Mm -hmm. Which of the two would you invest? All right. Okay, people have already started answering and because... they're answering stock B. Okay, one of them has a lot of comment. Huh? What, yeah. what, what did you say? B is better for long term. A has DPR of almost 100%. Mm -hmm. No more money for reinvestment. B has reserve for investment. Okay. Okay, that's also logical. All right. So what else? Invest in both. <laughs> okay. The next comment, uh, stock B, dividend higher and earnings higher. Okay. So, okay, from... So for most people, they are actually answering stock B. Lah. Mm -hmm. Someone has answered stock A. Okay. All right. So I would say out of 10 people, 8 will say B over yeah. A. Right? Okay. So let's reveal their identity. Okay. <laughs> now, in a glance, I believe this is what you have calculated. All right. In a glance, um, we find that stock A, all right, the PE ratio is 16.25. And then for stock B, the PE ratio is 12.38, right? Mm. So in a glance, we can say, mm, stock B seems to be cheaper than stock A, right? Because one is at 12, one is 16, what? Yeah. Might as well go for 12. Logical. Now let's look at uh, dividends. Now when it comes to dividends, stock A actually not bad, lah. you know, dividend yield is 6%, double the FD rate. But stock B, wow, 6.46, eh? All right, mm -hmm. it's a bit more than stock A, some more cheaper, uh, PE ratio some more cheaper. And not only that, look at the price itself, uh, more affordable. Uh, mm -hmm. Three ringgit only, uh, right now. Yeah. Now let's jump back to 2019. Let's review. Let's see what is your what will your investment returns be. Okay. Now fast forward to May 2019. Here mm -hmm. are your results. Okay. <laughs> for stock A, for those of you who choose stock A, um, it went from 11 ringgit and 70 cents, that's your purchase price. Today, that stock is trading at 25 ringgit and 42 cents. So you have a capital appreciation of 11, eh, no, 117.3%. Wow. wow, right? Seems like more than double your capital. Wow. 
Then in the three years, you have actually collected two ringgit and fifty cents in dividends. So therefore, in that three years, your dividend yield is a, is about twenty one point four percent lah. So all in all, your return for that three years is about one hundred and thirty eight point seven percent. Hey, not bad lah. Uh, for if you if you choose stock A, uh, congratulations. But let's look at stock B. Stock B has um, uh, lost money a bit. Um, the price has has actually de- uh, dropped from three ringgit and thirty three cents to two ringgit and fifty cents. Mm-hmm. So it's a capital loss of twenty five percent. But hey, it's dividend yielding. Uh, forty nine cents more. All right. So you're getting. 14.7%, which means you are losing just 10% lah in that three years period. All right. So of course, you may be saying, why like that one? All right. I thought I choose this. I'm doing the right thing. What Ian say? How come? How come stock A make money? Stock B don't? Mm-hmm. Actually, there are a lot of wisdom behind it. Okay. Okay. Now the first one is this: even if you invest in stock B, mm-hmm. because you think that is because dividend. You won't lose that much mm-hmm. because at least you're getting some cash, so it will offset some of your capital loss, lah. Because if you purely go for capital gain, capital gain all the time, you're you're like addicted to that capital gain, and then you forget about dividend yield. Then if it's a loss, then it's loss, lah. <laughs> no way to recover already. Bye bye, lah. Yeah, that goes your money, lah. All right. So that is the first wisdom, first gem of wisdom. Now, as for the second reason, which is the ultimate, uh. How we say the ultimate reason? Mm-hmm. I have to do a live demonstration, lah. Okay. So with that, um, I have to actually, uh, look at my spreadsheet, huh? Okay. So let's go to my spreadsheet. I'm gonna show you. Okay. Um. So you guys can actually see, right? My Google spreadsheet, which is a uh, stock A, and stock B, and by the way, stock B is not the star. And stock B is also not Asia. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now as you can see from stock A, here's what I like to point out. Yeah. Okay, so this is the earnings per share. Can you see that this is 2015, and uh, I have actually compiled the earnings per share for the past 10 years. Mm-hmm. Purposely, so for me as an investor, it's very important for me. I'm not too sure for you lah, but for me, I have this habit of compiling ten years worth of, uh, ten years track record of a company's earnings per share. It's very important. Okay. All right, because if you see here, from twenty eight cents, it actually grow. Mm-hmm. No negative. It means ten straight years of profit. Ten straight years of stable growth, or at least seven or nine years lah. All mm-hmm. right. So maybe one of the year it drop a bit, but don't be so. Don't be so legit, la. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> but overall, in that 10 years period, it must be like in a straight line. Mm-hmm. At least that's the first uh, quality. Okay. Okay. Of course, yes, I will do the the that's the first criteria. When it comes to quarterly, uh, some of, because I've uh, got experience already, some will ask, hey, what about the quarterly? Need to see or not? Usually, quarterly, I also see, all right? So, for my own subscribers, I will actually compile like 20 quarters mm-hmm. so I can see the pattern. Okay, so usually I see all these things for a reason. I want to check out the pattern, whether or not it's profitable mm-hmm. and whether or not it's consistently profitable. Okay, that is the first criteria. So stock A has actually passed this criteria. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now let's look at stock B. Now when it comes to stock B, uh, can you see here? It's 10 years of profitability. Yes, no negative, but yeah. got profit, right? But then it went from 37.9 cents and it every year it actually declined it seems like on the either it's not increasing mm-hmm. or it's actually like a bit like decline oh low, okay getting lower so i'm gonna give you like five seconds to actually think about it lah. Mm-hmm. look at the look at the figures it's actually on the declining trend mm-hmm. okay so this is very important the first thing when it comes to valuation is that you cannot just do on a single year basis. Okay. It has to be on a 10 year basis. Okay. Now, if you see this particular stock and I compile the stock price for the past 10 years, lah. this one, you can get it from Google. This one, you can get it from the annual reports of the company. Lah, all mm-hmm. right. Now I calc- 
Now, when you can, as you can see, I always like to compare the 10-year performance of a stock price with the 10-year profit performance. Mm -hmm. There's always a reason why one, because after after you look at a lot, um, a lot of stocks, lah. All right, you tend to have this conclusion. In that 10 years, if the company has consistent growth in profits, usually the stock price will be good one. Mm, okay. Growth in profits always always lead to growth in stock price. Okay. Declining in profits, like what you see right now, mm -hmm. always lead to declining stock prices. All right. So if I go back to stock A, you can see the stock price performance. Lah. All right. It went up from 5 ringgit to 11 ringgit. Yeah. Okay. It's actually that simple. Mm -hmm. But in that 10 years period, although growth in profits lead to growth in prices, sometimes you get good news one. Because not everyone is, not all people who buy stocks are value investors. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they, they are very short term one. All right. So, so whenever there's a, there's a hot market, maybe people say, hey, Miss Mita, buy la, buy la. They say, really? Ya? Can buy, ya? buy all. All right. There will be there will be times like that one. Mm -hmm. When that happens, it will cause the stock price to actually go up. Then it's more and more expensive. Mm -hmm. Actually, at that time, we will be willing to sell to Smithal. So <laughs> <laughs> then we say bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But how do we know that kind of thing happened? Mm -hmm. So we calculate PE ratio. Okay. You see the PE ratio, we calculate it for the past 10 years. Mm -hmm. So if I look at for the past 10 years, the PE ratio, right? See, Google spreadsheet very good. It gives us the average. So the average is 16.96, right? So let me just put it down here, 16.96. That's the average lah. Okay. And then I compare it, and then I compare it with uh, today's uh, 16.25. Uh. Mm -hmm. So 16.25, I will is the current PE ratio, and then the 10 year average is 16.9. Nine six. If the current is low, ah, here's the thing. If the current PE ratio is lower than the ten year average, good sign, very good. Okay. Okay. Because it means it's cheaper than its average. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. So for stock B, you can actually do the same lah. But usually I won't do, uh, because I only invest in companies that, uh, grow profits consistently. All right. Okay. Because if that criteria is not met, then PE ratio is actually meaningless. Lah. But if you can see here, the PE ratio is 13.65. Mm -hmm. So, and the current is 12.17. So stock B is also trading at below its average, which is okay, but it, the quality part not there, you see. So sometimes um, stock valuation is always, uh, you have to look at multiple angles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you can also do the same for dividend yield. Now let's look at dividend yield. The 10 year average is actually 4.99, right? So let's put let's put a note here, 4.99%. And the current is actually 6.07%. Mm -hmm. Very good sign. It means what you know, your current dividend yield, if you buy now, is more than your average. Very good. It's like, um, Usually, this place, the property market is 500,000. That's the bank value. Uh -huh. Now you're getting at 400,000. Wow, oh, okay, lo. good. Mm -hmm. la. That's what it means. La. Okay. Whereas for stock B, of course, the average is 7.88% because the dividend has been declining anyway. And then its current is 6.57%. All right? Mm -hmm. So, therefore, the dividend yield is below its average. La. So, it's not a good. Not exactly a good thing, lah. Okay. Okay. So with that, let's move back to my slide. I'm gonna wrap this up with a few uh, gems of wisdom. Okay. Okay. So let's continue. Oh, we have oh. to. Let's speed. <laughs> let's do a bit of speed. Speed clicking here. Okay. Here's the summary of my presentation today. So if you. If you are new to investing or you have been investing for a long time, maybe these are some of the key takeaway points lah, uh, to help you to become a much better investor. This is for my own personal sharing. The first one is, if you don't have a system, have a system. Mm -hmm. Very important. Okay, so for me, 
Um, step number one is always to assess the quality. Actually, I'm supposed to review who are the stocks. Never mind, later I will do <laughs> after, after the summary. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, I will review to you, all right? For those of you who are thinking, sure not, we will stop or not. But anyway, step one, like just now stock A and stock B, mm -hmm. we always need to assess the quality of the stock first, all right? Because if the quality means the profits got grow or not, if got grow, good. That's one of the one of the key qualities. If the profit is declining all the time, no good. Mm. Bad quality. Bad quality means forget about valuation lah. From the good, do valuation. A lot of people don't. Um, a lot of people they tend not to follow this order. They don't see quality first then valuation. Okay. What that means is that they go to the market. Uh, fishmonger A has good fish. Mm. You can you, you see wow, very delicious. Fishmonger B, uh, fish not so good, but then very cheap. Fish about to be rotten one. Oh, okay. All right. So for a rotten fish, how much? How much will you pay for a rotten fish <laughs> I don't think I won't buy the rotten fish. Yeah, that's that's like that's exactly it. So when you buy fish, right, you always buy the good ones that you want to market, right? Mm -hmm. Then only you bargain for the price, right? Yeah. For rotten fish, you want to bargain for what? Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly the point. Okay. The third one is just now. I asked, just now from the first question, uh, stock A one ringgit, stock B ten ringgit. Okay, uh, which one is cheaper? All right. So here the lesson is, do valuation. What's affordable? One ringgit is more affordable than ten, mm -hmm. but it may not be cheaper. Do valuation. The third, the fourth one is always compare its current valuation against its ten year average. That's for stock itself. Oops. Okay. Do, don't do current only. Mm -hmm. It's very misleading. Like just now, a lot of people do do B. Yeah. All right. It's not to say it's a mistake. I intended it to be a mistake mm -hmm. anyway. I purposely find this to actually share with you that you should do 10 years average. And the fifth one is, like for example, sometimes we have stocks like, okay, Bubbly Bank, CIB Bank, May Bank. Which one is better? So you have to compare it with its peers. Mm -hmm. Like Rubber Glove, Hatta Lega, Kosan top glove, which one is better? Compare lah. Do the do do the assess quality valuation, then you find lah, which is the best for you. Mm, okay. Okay, with that I have actually counting my session apart from revealing who is stock A and who is stock B. <laughs> do I want to do that or should I actually do that? Do you want to do Yeah, let's do that, then we can get into QA lah. Okay. Uh how do I get to the spreadsheet? <clears throat> So let me reveal to you, then we will answer your all your questions. Thank you so much for your this for your patience and your for your for your assistance and every and your you know attentiveness very important. So here we go. Stop B. Berjaya stop Berjaya Sports Toto. Alright. So this is actually uh stock B. It's actually quite well known in the market mm. to be a dividend stock. Alright, but yeah. Decline in profits means decline in stock prices. Any guesses for stock A? I'm gonna review to you now. Stock A is Carlsberg. Carlsberg yeah. <laughs> Someone actually answered Carlsberg. Maybe he's an investor. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So with that, let um. Thank you so much, Smita, okay. for having me. Thank you. Okay. So now we are um going on to the Q and A session. Mm -hmm. So. Please um, place your comments in the place your questions on the comment box, and we already have a few questions, so I will uh, start answering, uh, start asking that questions first. Okay, I got all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's. Okay, yeah, yeah. now that everything is moving fast, do we still look into ten years? Many companies are new companies for a few years, etc. Okay, um, it depends on what you're investing for, lah. All right. The reason why I go with ten years is because. Um, you know, in the ten years period, lah, mm -hmm. a lot of things can happen. You know, economic booms, economic bust, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say for example, we can have government changes from BN to Pakatan, right? Yeah, it can happen in ten years. Mm -hmm. Or you have the US China trade war. You have everything in ten years. Mm -hmm. So why ten years? Because it's a it's a test. You want the company right to be resilient in all economic and political changes. Every climate also, every climate also profit on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is why I look at ten years. 
I'm not too sure about you. All right. If but the danger is for me, if you look at three years only, okay. So let's say for example in 2014, okay. Last time I can recall, uh, all right. There are so many government projects mm -hmm. like construction projects like MRT, LRTs, everything come. Yeah. Then all the construction company, wow, get all the order books and stuff like that, and then their profits are sh all shooting up, right? Then you only look at the three years. Mm -hmm. Now government change, then oh, a lot of uncertainty. Don't know what happened to your MRT and all this kind of stuff. Don't know, don't know, don't know. And then everyone also don't know. Mm -hmm. Then uh, then nobody want to invest already. Then the stock price also jump, also slump. Then the profit also slump. Okay, so that means to say we cannot look at three years only. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it is actually meant for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, we have another question here. How do you evaluate new IPO stock? Usually, I don't evaluate new IPO stock. All right, because um, here's the thing: the reason why I compare not just the profit of the company, but also with the ten-year price performance, mm -hmm. because I want certainty. Okay, for IPO, uh, there's no reference. Mm -hmm. Means to say, because the stocks are not traded, so when they are not traded, we won't know. Yeah, we will not. We will not know who is going to buy, who is not going to buy and stuff like that so like for example like um let's say bigger caps um let's say for example um not to mention stocks but anything below be beyond a billion dollars mm -hmm. all right in uh 100 percent shareholdings of market cap all right they are owned by pension funds financial institutions now these are all very stable investors and they want cash returns so they they are very appreciative of stability mm -hmm. So with them around, then of course your investment will be more stable, lah. Because you don't have speculators started suddenly like going come up, going come up. Then your stock price also yo yo all the time. Mm -hmm. So I don't want that with my investment. So it depends on whether you want that mm -hmm. for your investment or not, lah. All right. Okay. Then um the next question is how should we, how should we look at valuation expansion? For instance, in situation of Harta, Nestle, QL, which have PE of more than 40? It depends. Huh? Um, for me, after beyond, actually for my own portfolio, I never had anything beyond 20. Lah. So, <laughs> so because, I mean to say, it depends why you want to, why you want to get into that. All right. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, it's, everything is about, um, if we are talking about stock valuation, value investing. Lah. Mm -hmm. All right. So you may buy, uh, let's say a property. Uh, let's find a very good location. Let's say Mon Kiara. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's use the fit. Let's use the uh, audience. Uh. Now I'm gonna have. I've got this uh, one thousand square foot property apartment. Okay. And Smita, I'm gonna sell you at one million. Will you take it? One million dollars to buy a one thousand square foot property. No. No. Uh. Oh, why not? <laughs> uh, okay, let's say if it's per square foot basis, one million divided by one thousand, mm. it's about one thousand per square foot, lah, right? Mm. So let's assume that around there, the per square foot you find all kinds of projects within the vicinity. It's also one thousand, lah. Okay, will you okay. buy? Yeah. Maybe, lah. Maybe. Maybe because you think it's a fair deal, mm. right? But what? Because Montera so prestigious, mm. and then. And then all the property looks so nice. Oh, so your assets quality not bad lah. Huh? Yeah. And then your per square foot price is one thousand, which is comparable with other people's. So okay lah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna say, what if the property I, now I'm gonna sell you at three million? Will you buy or not? No. No. Why not? Too expensive. Because it's three. Because it's three thousand per square foot. They say, what for Montera? When you're selling me KFCC price, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So it's the same principle lah when it comes to Nestle, QL, and Atanega. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so um, let's move on to the next question. Uh, okay, so many questions coming in. Okay. Um, mm, let's see. Oh, there's so many. Uh. Yeah, so many. Might I just pick one? Uh, okay, then, okay. Then, so okay, uh, now, what do you think about valuation looking at cash flows? 
Um, ideally, ideally, it's it, it's good in theory, but in practice, it's hard to achieve. Mm -hmm. All right, because different businesses will have different kind of cash flow patterns. Okay, so if you want to use um, cash flow, it doesn't. Okay, like for example, banks. All right, how do you assess bank value of bank like Maybank and Public Bank using cash flow mm -hmm. or discounted cash flow? You can't. Why? Simple, because every day you walk into the black like bank, right? Um, you deposit money into the bank. Doesn't mean that the bank make money. Right? It's just the daily transaction. Okay, lah, I, I collect money from Smita. Then Smita also can say, oh, I, I want to withdraw. I go to the ATM and withdraw money. Mm -hmm. All right. So you, it's very, it's not, so that means you say there's like cash coming in, cash coming out, and it's, it may not be uh, reflective of its business performance. Okay. All right. So it doesn't mean that, oh, banks negative uh, in terms of uh, operating cash flow. So it's bad. All right, so so it doesn't make sense if it, if you want to use this on the bank. Mm -hmm. Okay, whereas for manufacturing, sometimes you don't. Okay, sometimes you don't know. Okay, like for example, uh, okay, there are suppliers. All right, and then your credit terms is like that, and then you and then you change another supplier, and then the supplier give you another credit terms. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's not it's not to say the business is not profitable. It is profitable. But um, because of these changes in the uh, cash patterns, then you may af uh, affect your your what you call your valuation when it comes to cash flow. Mm -hmm. So for me, the cash. But then yet again, uh, I would also like to stress that it's very important for us to look at cash flow. So for me, the general benchmark is this: uh, I want it, I want it to have cash. Okay, positive cash flow is good enough for me. Mm -hmm. As long as it's positive cash flow, it's growing. And uh, it it allows the company to actually finance its investments or expansion plans and pay out dividends. I'm good. I mean, not too sure about what is your criteria, mm -hmm. but to me that's good enough. Okay. Right. Okay. So um, the next question. Okay. Okay, when we look in, into forward PE, mm -hmm. we should use price divided by next 12 month EPS or next financial year EPS. Okay, so next financial year EPS is I do not know how they are calculate how they calculate. That means say we are now 2019, right? Mm -hmm. So for those of you uh, who are listening, forward PE ratio means to say you are you are trying to project what's gonna happen next year, lah. Okay, so it's like Smita and I run a business and then we say. Uh, this year we make about 1.5 million uh, meter. so next year I think we can make 2 million uh. but did we make 2 million? Haven't you right? Isn't mm -hmm. it? Because it's, next, it's, it's something that we think and expect for the next year so if you want to use the figure it's also okay uh, but for me I don't do that uh. I only use the actual one mm -hmm. because the actual one is like um, it's more uh, realistic to me uh. it's like property it's like property thing about it uh. it's like um, Let's say you have a property sub sale market, mm -hmm. and then you say, uh, which one do you think is more certain for you, Aspita? Property, yeah. Secondary market, um, a re existed one, got tenants. Then you ask, uh, how much are you paying for your for your rental of two thousand a month? Second property, haven't constructed. Mm -hmm. The agent, the selling agent, say, oh, once it's completed, lah. You can actually rent out the rooms, uh, and then you get two thousand five a month. Okay. Um. Okay. Which of the two do you think has more certainty? The sub sale property. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> 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 okay. So the next question is, uh, how about the type of business the company is doing? Is it one of a big factor in choosing good stocks? Yes, it's a very big part. Because, um, whether or not you you. It doesn't matter how you view it, lah. For me, when you buy into a business, eh, when you buy a stock, it means you are, you are putting capital into a business. Mm -hmm. So it, it's best that you invest with the mindset of owning a business, not playing with shares and just merely gambling. Yeah. Okay. So the next question, um, do you think the com construction company is undervalued now? The whole construction stock PE and PB is considered 8 to 10 years low. 
Okay, um, there are many construction companies where their share price has actually dropped, right? And then of course their PE ratio now looks very nice. Now the question is this, the reason why we look at business model is, is, is this. For construction companies, you see, it's unique because um, for it to be continuously profitable, because for me it's a very big word, it has to be continuously profitable for the past 10 years. Mm -hmm. Not many construction based companies can achieve that. That's number one. You have to look back at the 10 years. After that, you say, I don't want, don't want already. Never mind. All right? Mm -hmm. But do your homework, right? Do the 10 years thing. Okay? Now, the second thing is um, what is going to happen in the future? Because construction companies tend tend to make money out of contracts, mm -hmm. like MRT contracts, LRT contracts, highway building contracts, or they want to build new buildings and then got contract, okay? So what happens after the contract expired? Oh, oh, we have, it's like this, lah. like property development, right? Let's say small scale property development. You say, okay, I, uh, me and Smita, we get into a business where we're gonna build this building. It's gonna cost us, it's gonna, the contract is worth 200,000, eh, 200 million. Mm -hmm and we have to build it in three years so we work very hard we build the building for three years and then after three years we get the two hundred thousand. then we didn't secure any other contract mm -hmm. he says Mita, what, what are we going to do next so no no contract then we have to find contract then during this period how yeah no more profit right mm -hmm. yeah, then your share price drop mm -hmm. so it's very dependent on what the company what the construction stock has in hand when it comes to contracts very important factor so you may want to look into that if you are interested in construction stocks okay mm. so uh the next question uh, yeah. okay the stock stock price that used for evaluation for the example stock a or b for the past 10 years is the highest or lowest or average price for the year it's the end price. Mean to say, um, if it's uh, if the end is thirty first December, it's thirty first December. All right. So it's not the highest, nor the lowest, nor the average. It's the end price of that financial year. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Thanks. So um, in the Excel sheet, there were other parameters such as DPS and market cap. What are those, and how does it affect? Effect your evaluation. Okay, DPS is just dividends per share. Mm. Okay, that one uh, very important to me is everything So, so you use that as well. EPS and DPS you use it. For me, I use it side by side. Okay, and uh, market cap is not exactly a factor. Market cap, the definition is very simple. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say for example, um, market cap means let's say May Maybank lah. All right. If you want, Smita, if you want to buy the entire Maybank mm -hmm. or the banking empire, how much do you think is the price tag of the entire banking empire of Maybank? Mm. Just guess a figure. Lah. Don't, know. Don't know. It's actually 100 billion. Wow. Ringgit. Mm -hmm. 100 billion. Um, do, do we have the money to buy? Mm -hmm. No. So therefore, the shares are split right mm -hmm. into let's say um, 10 billion, okay? Let's say 10 billion shares, lah. okay? So you take 100 billion, mm -hmm. we divide it by, we chop it down into 10 billion, slice a cake, and then everyone gets a share lah, mm -hmm. of $10, all right? So it's, some, so it's something like that. So market cap means 100 billion, okay? So it is actually, the, it is actually calculated like this, the share price multiplied by the number of shares. That's it. Okay. Then uh, the next question, which reference date should be the stock price for the valuation analysis? Um, the financial year end. Uh. Financial year end. All right, but this one, you, it depends how detailed you want to, want, it depends how you detailed you want to be. Uh, maybe some people, they do it on a daily basis or monthly basis. That one is up to you, but then to me, it's not efficient anymore. Mm -hmm. Because you are overly... Uh, concerned about the uh, analysis although it's good it's good don't get me wrong it's good to be as detailed as possible but it's not so 
efficient in terms of time management lah because we are all busy <laughs> <laughs> working individuals and so, <laughs> or self-employed people and stuff like that. Okay, so um, the next question is mm -hmm. enterprise value another kind of valuation? Uh, yes, okay, but I don't use it because the calculation is a bit um, complicated. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, some some stocks do do that kind of uh, valuation, the enterprise value. But the thing is, not every stock does that for you. So when you have 900 stocks and then you want to do peer-to-peer -peer comparison, mm -hmm. and then some a few, a handful of stocks will do the enterprise value, the EV. Most of them don't do EV. How are you going to compare? You're going to be sitting down there trying to calculate. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be very time consuming, so I don't do that. Okay. So okay, we still got a lot of questions coming in. Am I just feel okay? Is there any other important ratios to look into since there are too many ratios? It's just four. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Master that four, you should be good enough. Right? I mean, of course there are. Price to revenue ratio, price to cash flow ratio, price to this ratio, price to that ratio. Um, you have too many ratios, later you go who so no need lah. I mean you have four, I mean to me four is more than enough, alright? It's actually something like martial arts lah, you know. Uh, like Chinese Kung Fu, they have too much, uh, sorry to say lah, too, too much Gaia or something like that lah. but then in actual combat you may not you may not use every single Gaia mm -hmm. all right whereas for let's say Muay Thai or something like that you only have a few punches here and there but then they practice it like 10,000 times so if they do if they if they want to do a jab and cross they might practice that a hundred thousand of times mm -hmm. that is even better than learning hundred thousands of Gaia but little practice mm -hmm. yeah okay so um, the next question, if let's say I want to invest in a big company and have done the valuation and the dividend is good, mm -hmm. but because of the current economy and the company's dividend decline, what does that affect me? Oh, that one is very subjective, okay. Um, the reason why we do 10 years is simply because uh, we want it to be resilient in in uh, every single market condition. So the idea, of, so for me, I am in favor of this kind of uh, of technique when it comes to building portfolios, which is all weather portfolio. Mm -hmm. It means good time, bad time, the, prof the portfolio must make money and it must be safe and sustainable, okay? So when you have access of business and then you find that it's good, the valuation makes sense, it's cheap, and then the economy is bad, Actually, when the economy is bad, the valuation is supposed to be attractive because no many, not many people are willing to invest. So actually, it's a good time to pick up stocks. So I think it's okay. Okay. So, um, another question. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So, um, when you calculate the PE past year, mm -hmm. are you using current price over the EPS for that particular year or using the close price on the financial year over EPS? Close price. Okay. So, another question, will you compare with a way of different industry stock or similar industry stock to invest? Um, similar lah, peer to peer lah, apple to apple. Okay. That one is very important lah. You can't compare, let's say, let's say for example, a read with a bank doesn't work okay mm. so you have to do it peer by peer lah. plantation means plantation uh, manufacturing means manufacturing all right so do peer-to-peer -peer comparison it okay. it's more meaningful that way lah. okay but beyond that um, I think it's actually very important for you to understand your objective of investing okay so for me I'm more of a dividend guy as introduced lah. Mm -hmm. okay so for me that is that's my game lah at this point of time. So usually uh, that's where you build your watch list and then therefore you will actually play around with that, that particular game. So know your objective is very important. Okay, so since uh, we're running out of time, so we'll just take the last question. Okay. 
uh, for REITs. Is there any other valuation metrics that we should look at? REITs are. Okay, REITs, usually I don't do PE ratio. Okay? Because REITs for PE ratio, it will be very, very low. Mm -hmm. All right? Simply because they value their properties every single year. Okay? Like for example, Sunway Pyramid. All right? It's a... It's owned by somebody read. Every year, sure, got valuation. Every year, the price increase. Mm. All right? Year by year, the shopping mall increase in appreciate in price, property price. So, and they will factor that in into the current year's earnings. It will jack up the earnings. Therefore, your PE ratio will be very low. Okay? So therefore, mm. I don't do that. All right? Um, for me, what is more realistic is to calculate its uh, distribution. Okay. Why? Because capital appreciation of a property is not cash. Why do you, it doesn't, it's just on paper. It's like your, your house appreciate from 1 million to 1.2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it doesn't, but then if you don't do anything, you don't refinance your property, you don't, you don't do nothing to your property. It's just on paper, lah, all right? Mm -hmm. So the more important thing is the rental income. So uh, every now and then you can actually, um, uh, collect the collect the distribution. If it's a REIT, of course for property is rental lah. All right. So therefore, from there you calculate your returns. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I will use the di distribution U uh, a lot when it comes to that. And at the same time, I will use uh, PB ratio because for me, uh, property means the the business model is recurring because mm -hmm. property ma, you can keep on renting for. It depends on what, actually, uh, this, this one is also very important. Different reads will have different kind of uh, characteristics. Okay, let me explain. Uh. Yeah. Um, the first one is actually, uh, the longer term one is actually hospital. All right, you can buy some, some reads, they just own hospital. So when they do that, let's say some hospital. Uh, when they sign the agreement, they say, okay, we are going to, we're going to lease the property for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. All right. Other hospitals can be 15 years. All right. And for the next 15 years, that REIT is going to make money. It's going to make rental income from that hospital. On the incremental, every year the, the rent will go up one mm -hmm. for the next 15 years. All right. If, so that means I say it's a super safe, resilient business model. And you can actually use PB ratio on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whereas some, let's say like hotel, then of course, can also la, but then hotel means, because hotel usually the arrangement is a bit different la, mm -hmm. because hotel is like, they have a base rent, and then it depends on the hotel sales. If the hotel is doing well, then you get more. If you, if the hotel is not doing as well, then you get lesser. All right. So there's different place. Mm -hmm. All right. But still I'll use both la. Okay. So read is actually something that I think I'm also quite okay with lah. So uh, yeah, well, that's why I say <laughs> mention a little bit more lah. Okay. Mm. Okay. So that's the end of our questions. Okay. And um, thank you so much, Ian. I know. Thank you so much, Pete. <laughs> okay. So I uh, just um, let you let you guys know about the next webinar. Mm -hmm. So the next webinar will be the science of buying and the art of selling. So the date will be 3rd of June, 2019. Uh, it will be 8.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. And here's the link to register for the webinar. So I will drop the link here in the chat box. Okay, that's the, that's the registration link. And with that, uh, we come to an end of our webinar. Thank you so much, everyone, for being a very good participant and asking all, the, all your questions. Thank you so much for your time. And of course, thank you, Mr. Ian Tai. Thank you. So if uh, the participants want to get in touch with you, they can email you, right? Yeah, just email me. Lah. All right, that's the fastest way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so thank you so much, everyone, again. And um, okay, I just uh, have a comment that no registration link can be seen. The registration link is in the chat box. Can you please see the chat box? And then you'll see the registration link. Okay, so with that again, thank you so much. Thank you, Ian. All right, thank okay. you. You're welcome. <laughs> and thank you so much for joining our webinar tonight. All right.